This is Heavy Conversation with Bruce and Jody, a podcast where we talk about being a big guy in today's world. I'm Bruce. And I'm Jody. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Hey Bruce, Jody, what's up? What's uh, up, man? I, I'm really, I'm really excited. I think um, you know, if if anybody follows uh, Heavy Conversation on social media, they probably saw uh, that we put this out there. But um, we have been nominated for an award. I know. Congrats, us. Yes, I think this is our second nomination for this award. Yeah. Yes, it's our second nomination for outstanding podcast nominees uh, for um, yeah for outstanding podcast from the Full Figured Industry Awards. So yes. the FFIAs, and they've uh, they've been around for uh, for a while now, and uh, you know they kind of spotlight uh, uh, people in uh, the big and tall and plus size industry who are doing uh, uh, interesting things, and so. Yeah, we uh, we we got nominated. Uh, it's our, our second nomination, and uh, it's pretty cool. So yeah, it is. It's I mean, it, it's still weird that we've been doing it for so long, and it I is. don't really think about it. Like I do it, and then I just it's done, and right. I don't think about that. There are lots of people out there listening to it. Yeah, yeah, that's I, that is it, the interesting thing because we do that. Yeah, it's not like it's this is not the most produced and planned podcast yeah. that you'll find on the internet so <laughs> what? Yeah, it's not don't you give know, away the not, secrets right 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 <laughs> so you know it's it's one of those things where we come on we talk about our thing and we go so it's it's awesome you know it's great that people are listening first and foremost you know and if you're listening thank you yes thank uh, you for listening and yeah and so so when something like this comes up it's just it's really cool and uh you know, it's, it's, we, we, we're honored. Yes. So. We are very honored to be nominated. And yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know that I'll be attending the award ceremony. I would like to. Yeah. Um, but flights are crazy expensive. Yes. I, I've been like, I've been wanting to travel a bunch more this year, but tickets are crazy expensive. And yes. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if maybe we can manage some things and right actually right. attend the awards yeah so it is uh the the ceremony takes place saturday november 5th of this year uh, at mm -hmm. the jamaica performing arts center in jamaica new york yes so yes so um yeah it's definitely uh you know if you're in the area and you want to support and uh you know check out the 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 whole thing uh, you can get tickets online. It's at uh, the F F I A S dot com. The mm -hmm. F F I A S dot com. So full figured industry awards. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So check it out. And there are nominees for lots of different categories. So like we said, podcast, outstanding stylist, uh, outstanding silver fox nominees Ooh. i like that i like that um outstanding plus model uh photographer makeup artist designers bloggers big and tall models um entertainer of the year uh emerging big and tall models and there's emerging plus models content nice. creators there's all kinds of really cool things here so you know it's uh it is it's awesome to know that there is uh you know, there's an organization that's kind of keeping track of this entire industry. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I know, and I know the one of the nominees for Entertainer of the Year that I didn't know. I didn't know his real name was Perry Lambert. But, hey. um he's a a Portland rapper, actually. So, oh wow, okay, nice. He's he's currently. I think he might be probably touring the Pacific Northwest right now. He's okay. doing like a bunch of different shows around the Pacific Northwest, shot a bunch of videos and yeah. There we go. Yes. I actually so, met him when I worked at DXL. He came in there a few times. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. Yeah. So check it out. And uh, yeah, we're again, very excited about it. And uh, we, we might, we might be there. We'll see. It's across yeah. the country for us, but it, yeah, would be right? cool. <laughs> it would be cool to attend. So yes. So how's everything else going? How are you doing? 
Things are good. Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks with the new launch at Bearskin with the our blueberry lights. So that's going really well. It's nice to yeah. have something new out there and just keeping busy with summer, um, trying to get out there as much as I can. The weather's a little bit more reasonable now. So nice. Um, you know, mid 80s is, is decent for me. Not 90 plus right. where I was just hibernating inside. So. <laughs> totally yeah, it's been good yeah. i don't got yeah. nothing too crazy i'm watching all the dogs uh bjorn my business partner is on a trip so i'm i've got two dogs to watch so it's been wrangling two dogs and one's kind of a puppy still so she's a <laughs> bit of a handful a little, <laughs> a little chaotic with that but nice nice yeah we're good we're good yeah i am back in town um after traveling and um i got back into town and then we went camping like the day after mm -hmm. um i uh came home and promptly got an ear infection and Ooh, uh, fun. so that that has made life interesting so uh <laughs> that's why we're on zoom and that's why i'm not wearing uh headphones i gotta get an earbud in my good ear you know it's <laughs> Yeah, your one good ear. I know my one good ear. It's uh, I gotta it's, talk it's, into my good ear. Yeah, it's rough. I never got ear infections until I got older, like the last six years or so. Um, all of a sudden, it's just kind of cropped up, and it's been a fairly reoccurring thing. So, mm. yeah, yeah I, I I think I was telling you about this. I used to get ear infections a lot when I was younger. Mm. Um, so I don't I don't remember what the deal was, but I know that I had some. I, I want to say they put tubes in my ears or something. I don't know what the heck happened. They did some oh, wow. kind of surgery and I've been, you know, knock on wood, I've been good since then. But yes, I am always very careful when I'm cleaning my ears. Um, I don't put the, you know, the thing that you're not supposed to use, the right. Q-tip. The you Q-tip. Know, you don't put it way in there. A lot of times I do, um, I do these drops that mm -hmm. loosen up the wax and then flush it out. Or I've tried yeah. uh, what ear candling. Have you ever done that? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. That's always crazy and frightening at the same time. Yep. They like you. You lay on your side. They put this like um, weird uh, funnel thing that's like beeswax and something. I don't remember. And then they literally light the tip of it. The well, the the end that's further away from your head on fire, and it that heat um, pulls the wax out of your ear. Oh yeah, and it's kind of frightening. A lot of times they'll put like a a thing, a shield, on so it doesn't fall on your face or you don't see it. So, but I've done that <laughs> many times, had that done, and it it's so gross. All that stuff that's in your um yeah in your right, ear right. and that comes out, and you're like the end of it's just like caked full of earwax. Or you're like, wow, what is? I can hear everything. Yeah, you know, I think I I think that. Uh, over cleaning my ears probably contributed to this ear infection so it's something that i'm really going to pull back on like mm -hmm. obviously i'm going to clean my ears but not like i have been and i mean i don't know it sucks this the whole ear infection thing sucks yeah, so it's enough yeah. to be like okay all right i need to be careful so oh yeah so i i just looked up tubes in ears because i've been telling that's what i had done in it they're tiny hollow cylinders that are surgically inserted yeah. into your eardrum and they enable uh build up of fluids to drain out oh wow so okay it, it, it doesn't build up inside your middle ear whatever i don't know i didn't know i had different middle ear i don't know <laughs> uh bodies yeah well it, you know when you like when you're something happened when you're a kid and you're like oh yeah and you're yeah. like is that actually a thing did i have right. two and i always think that i'm like I had tubes put in my ears. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've never actually looked that up. So right. Hmm. Allows air to flow into the middle ear and prevents the buildup of fluids behind your eardrum. Hmm. Well, there we go. Some really nice pictures of all that too. Oh, uh, I'm okay. sure. Mm. All right. I'm done with that. Yep. No thanks. No thanks. <laughs> well, on that happy note, uh, let's talk about our beer. This Ooh, week. What, what do you have? So I am uh, drinking a beer that was uh, 
uh, brewed in a dedicated gluten-free facility in McMinnville, Oregon. Okay. It is called, This is My Party Shirt. <laughs> and it's from Evasion Brewing. It's a gluten-free beer. Uh, it is an ale with hibiscus, agave, and lime. It says, you're cool. Your shirt is cool. Everyone at this party wishes they were drinking your cool, flowery beer. So uh, here's the the can. It has a, a great uh, flowery pattern that you would see on kind of a Hawaiian shirt sort of mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would wear this print. I, I like that. It's it's yeah. good looking. Yeah. And uh, it is a very, it's a very light beer. Um, you definitely get those those different uh those different flavors so uh the hibiscus is there the agave i guess we've talked about my uh feelings about agave you can't quite <laughs> i don't know it's like what is it i don't know but uh lime definitely limey so uh yeah i i like it it's an easy drinking beer and um i mean the fact that there's some hibiscus in it uh, it it gets a a thumbs up from me. So, nice. Yes. I've been, yeah, I've been drinking a lot of hibiscus tea lately, which is really mm -hmm. nice. Um, so mine is also a, a local beer from Breakside here in Portland. It's nice. called Guava Sparkler. Guava. What do you know? I know. I was like, oh, um, it's a lager with guava. It's a, oops. I'm hitting the microphone. Sorry. Uh, it's a four point five percent beer. Nice. But it says it's um like a brute so like a champagne beer ah the champagne of beers no 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 not exactly <laughs> <laughs> no it's like a brute it's a uh, champagne of beers yeah, yeah yeah okay all right um so yeah light bubbly dry sweet and citrusy so we'll see nice let's see let's see yeah he's taking a drink what do you think that is mm. that's good yeah I would, okay i would prefer this over a champagne i think oh there we go nice i'd say that's a ringing endorsement you know yeah that's nice it's a nice really light it's got just just a real light hint of like that citrusy berry flavor nice i like that it's not too like sour or crazy yep mm, good well, well good well if you are at all interested in the beers that we've mm. uh just recommended you can uh check them out on untapped and the heavy conversation beer list uh, we put up our beers there and you will find uh, the two that we just mentioned right there they're, so i like that they're sort of similarly um like styled what's the pink and the they are yeah sorry i'm trying to get a picture of y'all <laughs> all right picture time yes yes and is yours got right. guava in it too? Is that what you said? Or? Uh, no, it has agave, agave. Uh, which I think I got confused for guava, which I, yeah, because guava like... is the one, guava is <laughs> the one I've complained about. Agave, yes, yes, yes. agave is just a sweetener, right? So, yeah. okay, I was like, wait, what? I was looking at the can, I'm like, what does it say? Yeah, yeah, so, um, no, this is this is pretty good. I, I like this one, it feels like something you could drink when it's really hot out, so yes. I will definitely be finishing this one. Good. A lot of times I don't always finish the beer because we record so early. Right. This one is good. Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, not that they're not good, but I don't like to always end my day at before noon. Right. You've got a whole day ahead of you. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I I understand that. So, well, let's uh, jump into our next subject here, uh, which is near and dear to us. Um, uh oh. We're gonna we're gonna talk about private parts, so prepare yourself. Oh, yes, privates are near and dear to my heart. Yes, yes. So, uh, <laughs> according to a report, thirty nine percent of men say they've cut or injured private parts while removing body hair. So, Wait. this new report from um, uh, something called Style Seat. I was gonna say who's who's saying this? Yes. So let's let's see here. Style, Style Seat. seat? Yes. Okay. Style seat uh, looks like a style blog of some sort. Okay. And yeah, yeah, it looks like, yeah. So uh, I get a lot of PR pitches and this is one of them. And they said that um, uh, here are the key takeaways. There, there's some good stuff here. So 48% of Americans remove or trim body hair at least once a week. 
Uh, the most commonly groomed parts, pubic area is number one, armpits, number two, and legs, number three. Uh, well, that seems weird. Wouldn't your right. face, face be one, number one? I, you would think so. I mean, I guess they were looking at below the belt. I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, no. I, yeah. So again, 39% of male respondents report having cut or injured genitalia while removing hair. I think that's not high enough. I, you know, honestly. I would agree. I would, I would agree. say it would be way higher than that. Like, right, right. Because yeah, there's... before some of the newer um, trimmers, I, every time I did it, I get some sort of nick or totally. Yeah, no way. Right, right. And so, yeah, it's <laughs> that's not uncommon at all. So I, I feel like it's got to be higher. It's I mean, there's just... like a whole industry to prevent nicking down there for a while like but it's right. only a 30 okay anyways yes yeah so it's it, you know shaving shaving your your undercarriage is it's an art form it is like removing <laughs> yes. that hair however you decide to remove that hair uh -huh, it, ta uh -huh. it takes work and forethought so uh let's see the next thing here 79 percent of male respondents said they would adjust their body hair removal routine if a dating or sexual partner had a specific preference mm -hmm. so yeah that i would agree about right i'm sure yeah. uh okay and then the last one here is men shave half as much as their female counterparts each week however searches for male shaving topics are four times more common than women's shaving topics huh so there we go I, I think that, yeah, 30, I like most of the rest of that, but that 39%, I don't believe in that. I, I'm with you. I feel like 39% is low. It just, it just feels like, it feels like they're, it's, it's fraught with danger trying to uh, uh, groom yeah. down below. So, And I've noticed now that I've put on a few more pounds that yeah. um, it's not always as easy to see what you're doing down there. Right. Yep. Because I'm like, hmm. Bally, yeah. what are you doing? You're in the way. Can you right. Move? Can you move, please? So I can. It, yeah. So it takes. <laughs> I it want takes to have some real strategy. Very, yeah. I'm like, oh wow. I need. Yeah. I need a lot more mirrors in in my bathroom. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, and they've got those. They've got like the 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 shavers, the razors that uh, the electric razors with the like light, mm -hmm. the flashlight. That does help. Yep. Yeah. Which which is nice, but mm -hmm. you know, you, if you're still having to move skin and all that, it's it's a little yeah. Weird. You're like holding this and pulling right. this over there, and yep, yep. <laughs> need so, an assistant. Yes, <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's what it is. You just need somebody else to do it. Uh, agreed, exactly. <laughs> can you? Know, you uh, um, this is right. a weird favor, but can you? Uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> oh uh, yeah you'd have to find somebody you're really close with uh, well yes hopefully yeah, your you're sexual partner right right your intimacy partner whatever yes yeah. or you can go to a professional and uh, you know get uh sugared or waxed or i'm sure there's somebody who does, who, who do they just the do shave. trimming I, I i wonder i know that you can get you know you can get waxed or sugared or whatever but i wonder about trimming that because they've that, got to trim it don't they trim it first or do they well they want even... you to so with some of them they want it to be a little longer because apparently so it's then easier. the wax can hold on to it yeah it's easier to get it out oh, i'm turtling right now thinking about that i know i know i'm i'm not sure that i'd be yeah i, I mean whatever know. whatever floats your boat but right right i, I did that i um shaved everything one time and i will never do that again down there yeah 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 i had a someone that was like yeah it's i like that and i was like oh, well i've never done that so let's do that and then i'm like yeah no not doing yeah. that again i i will i will trim i like i like to to you know grooming is important so yeah. i you know yeah yeah I'll, I'll do some of that and i you know it's uh i think there was one time way back when i worked in radio and i was doing stunts i was a stunt mm -hmm, guy for the mm -hmm. radio station that uh I basically removed all my body hair from like my neck oh, down. Yeah. You said that uh, oh, yeah. for a liquid latex suit where I was going to be dressed wearing nothing but liquid latex, a thong, and some black boots as a as a Santa for a that's hot. Yes, that for a holiday hot. event. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know what? The the removal of the hair was okay, but 
when it started to all grow back about the same time yeah that's uh, yeah not so much so Mm -hmm. yeah so definitely uh uh wouldn't recommend going that hardcore they do say in this article that um 60 percent of the people that they interviewed for this report uh think that gender norms relating to body hair are fading away and i'd agree with that okay so yeah so there we go uh tell us what you think are you are you shaving are you grooming are you waxing what's your Mm -hmm, what's mm -hmm. your secret strategy for uh uh, do you have an assistant yes what happened what's going on there right so we want to know so uh thank you to the styleseat.com for that uh great report doing the the dirty work of talking to people about their (laughs) grooming habits and uh yeah so (laughs) (laughs) so there we go that's funny so I've got one last thing that I just wanted to throw out here because um, this is not something that I have ever really been into. And uh, again, you know, I I get pitches and I get all kinds of things that come in uh, to Chubster. And um, one of them that came in is a brand called Ladder, L-A-D-D-E-R, Ladder. Okay, all right. Um, So it's, they, they do like, supplements basically it's like like oh. a, like active like for athletes so not not like you know not like medication but it's like things to help you i guess if you're gonna work out if you need to hydrate oh, better like the recovery those protein powders and right stuff. okay exactly and so so it's a thing where Ladder. i'm like that's not anything I've, that i've ever really cared about but when I was pitched this, I saw that it is a uh, brand that uh, was started by LeBron James and oh. his trainer. And uh, apparently Arnold Schwarzenegger is somehow involved. So um, uh, okay, LeBron and Arnold, uh, I guess, may have uh, may have started this. So um, nice. Yeah. And it's. Uh, I guess they wanted something that was good that would work for, uh, you know, dealing with um, muscle cramps, recovery, hydration, all this high okay. performance stuff uh, that I generally don't think much about. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what I'm finding is that as I get out and ride my bike and as I'm more active um, and as I get older, uh, things start, I, I feel more pains. I get more like muscle issues and things yeah, like that. And so of course. I'm like, would something like this help? I don't know. I don't know. So they said, we'd like to send you a, you know, bundle of, of our stuff. And so they've got, uh, all these different kinds of like plant-based shakes, uh, protein, so on and so forth. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, they sent me a fancy cup to go with it. So I thought, what the hell? Let's give it a try and see. And uh, I um, I will say that of all the things, the thing that I thought that I would like the least is the one that I like the most. Oh. They, they have this chocolate flavor uh, protein powder. And it's... Uh, okay. It's phenomenal. Yeah, those, are, those aren't always so great, but yeah. no, and, and you know, fake chocolate, chocolate in general. I, mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. so so, you know, I, I'm sure I'll eat chocolate, but I don't. Eh, it's not my favorite, and <laughs> so this, the chocolate protein is phenomenal. Like I want. Was it the bundles. plant-based one or the regular one? It's the plant-based. Okay. So, plant. I was protein. super impressed with. Uh, with the way it tastes. Yeah, with the way it tastes. I uh uh I really like it. And um, you know, when I've been riding my bike and it's hot outside and I'm just feeling dehydrated and all of that, the hydration stuff, again, these are all things that I never considered because it's yeah. not like I'm, you know, I've always thought about this stuff as like it's only for athletes, blah, blah, Yeah, blah. it's for people that are like muscle like right doing some sort of competition or doing like totally. training for some event or a movie or whatever yeah right and so this is something that i started to consider a little more as i've been getting out and riding more and especially now that my my wife is running and she's doing like half marathons and things like oh, that yeah, she's definitely. running you know daily and uh 
you know, she's focused on hydrating and all of this. And so we started talking about it. And I mean, it's hard to drink enough water to, yeah. <laughs> you know, your daily intake of water. Uh, I mean, I've even got an app and the app is always uh, telling me how bad I'm doing at drinking my oh, water. Thank you. So doing these hydration things, uh, I did notice a difference. Um, you know, I was drinking a lot of, a lot more water. I decided to try the hydration things just to see if it made a difference. And I did notice a difference. Do I know based on one time of really trying that, that that was what made the difference? No, but I felt better. I felt more hydrated, less dry, less, you know, itchy, mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it feels like giving things like that a try makes sense. So yeah. uh, they have a bunch of different like hydration types that you know and they've got pre-workout flavors all these different things plant-based and they've got like the whey powder i don't know enough about the differences there uh yeah but uh yeah i mean i i, I, really... I definitely cannot do the whey protein powder because no. i'm lactose intolerant Ooh, like okay. i didn't it took me a long time to figure that out and i'm See. like really it's whey it literally is whey right that okay it's milk it's from yeah Okay, I see. I see. And so yeah, so they've also got this, they've got this uh, blog that shows all of these like amazing athletes. Uh, and, you know, some other people, you know, they've got like, like LeBron's trainer, like I said, they've got uh, um, Arnold, they've got uh, someone who must be his son, Patrick Schwarzenegger. Um, <laughs> they talk to some doctors. I mean, there's some cool things. And they're showing all these people doing these cool things. And they're talking a little bit about how they, um, you know, how they work uh, ladder into their, uh, you know, into their day-to-day -day process. But they also, the blog is cool because it's not just them talking about, Hey, ladder helped me. It's also like, um, like there's one here that's uh, talking to uh, an athlete named uh, I'm going to say Jorge, Jorge Sanchez. Uh, and he is, uh, uh, let's see here. So, uh, at eight years old, he was diagnosed with osteogenic sarcoma, which is a bone cancer in his left femur. Uh, they had to amputate his leg above his knee, uh, to help reduce the risk of the cancer returning. Um, he went through a lot. The whole story here is, is pretty intense. And, uh, somebody approached him to ask if he was interested in playing wheelchair basketball and, uh, it kind of changed his life and um, he's one of the best wheelchair basketball players in the U S oh, nice. um, he was actually uh, uh, part of the U S team uh, for the uh, Tokyo 2020 Par Paralympic games. So it's cool awesome. to see, you know, they're, they're also, they also have some interesting uh, stories and other things there. So, you know, the, the, the chocolate pulled me in and the blog <laughs> kept me. So um you know, it's, it's worth looking at. Like I, like I said, I think um, they've got a lot of different options. And I think that for me, my thing has always been like, when I look at these or you see, like, I don't know, what's it like GNC or those kind of stores. I've never yeah, felt like yeah. any of that stuff is geared toward me. You know, I've always felt kind of like left out, which I mean, yeah, yeah. When you're a bigger person. That's just kind of the way it goes. So seeing the, you know, kind of what they're doing here and, uh, like millions of other people i'm a big fan of lebron i think uh it was cool to kind of see what this is and try the stuff and uh yeah i'm pretty pumped so you can check it out for yourself uh their website is ladder.sport so yeah instead of dot com it's dot sport ladder.sport nice. dot so yeah check it out uh the um the i don't know the metal uh cup that uh, you shake the stuff in is is pretty cool. The shaker bottle, excuse me. There's the, the shaker the bottle. Actual name for it. It's a double walled stainless steel shaker bottle, um, which is pretty. It, which is, it works pretty well. I it has mm -hmm. a little thing in there to keep uh, to make sure the powder doesn't like all get sticky yep, at the yep. bottom. You know, I'm saying all this, and anybody who is active and uses this stuff on a regular basis, you know, you already yep. know this. But it's been fun to kind of go through and be like, huh, this is something that. I didn't allow myself to think that I could try and now I'm getting to try it and I like it. So 
um yeah you can try this stuff out uh they have subscriptions if you like it and you decide you want to go that way but uh, uh thanks ladder lebron arnold and everybody else who uh sent the stuff over <laughs> very nice we'll have to check it out let us yeah. know how it how it helps with your recovery and stuff there we go. That's that's I'm all I gonna got. drink my beer and get back to work. So. <laughs> good, good idea. I'm gonna do the same. On all that, I'm gonna drink my beer. Yeah. Well, Jody, I'm, I'm glad we got to connect and uh, things are slowing down a little bit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been crazy the past couple weeks. It has been crazy. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. We'll thank you. Thank you. Be back next week. All right. See you next Bye. week. Thanks for listening to Heavy Conversation. Be sure to like and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Podcasts. (laughs) Podcasts.